girls had to wear dresses in school. And, you know, the rules just weren't the same. And I rebelled against it since I was young. I moved to New York very early on and uh, ended up working with Gloria Steinem and um, on a, a TV show. It was a pilot called Woman Alive. It was about women's issues. And as I began to uh, – not only had I been affected by it growing up, and I and I I was talking to Hank last night about it. I said, you know, women have only been able to vote since 1919, the year that my father was born. I oh, looked wow. that up the other night after I watched Lincoln. I, I saw Lincoln at a theater, and I came home and I did some research on exactly what years, uh, you know, that women were given rights. Even in the 1900s, they weren't allowed to own property. And all of that... It stirs me so passionately. And my last show I did at Lucy's 51, I asked people to bring toys for this Christmas for children of of uh, domestic violence. Children are so affected by their mothers being abused in um, domestic, you know, in domestically violent homes. I can relate home. to that. Mm-hmm. And my father was, I had his moments with my mother. I don't need to go into the details, mm-hmm. but it, I, I just couldn't understand why she would stay and why she was so powerless. Mm-hmm. It's so important to me that women understand how powerful they are. And I, I was reading a, a something yesterday about um, the, these men in China now, because the government had killed off all the babies, uh, all, the, all the baby girls, or put them yeah. away, or put them up. You know, I don't know what happened to them, but they, but they, most families aborted any kind of if they knew that they were having a female baby. Yeah. Well, now all these, there are all these men, and they can't find a wife. There are no, there are no women to marry. Right. And and now the Chinese society is being greatly affected because they got rid of all the girls. I mean, it, it's exactly. like, I, I, so I'm. I can't change the world, but if I can have any kind of effect um, as I go along to empower women, that is uh, what drives me most passionately, is empowering women not to take abuse, not to be used, and to be, to be relaxed in, in their own skin and who they are and to feel their power. It's That, to me, is more important than acting and art. All of it is if I can have any kind of effect, you know, for women to feel their their power. And, you know, sometimes I look at these new videos and women being so, uh, you know, making themselves nothing but sep- sex objects. It yeah. feels like we're going backward, not forward. Right, right. And I, I agree with you that women need to know that they have to educate themselves and not to count on anyone else. And you are, you know, powerful enough to do that for yourself when my mom got a divorce back in the day, she had no skills, no credit in her name, nothing. She had to start from scratch. And I watched her struggle, and that was very sad. And that was, like, in the 70s, you know. So it wasn't – women weren't what they are today at that time. And she, have, of course, grew up, you know, in the, the 50s and that. So um, that was pounded in their head, you know, you – you go to school, you graduate, you marry somebody, you take care of your husband and your kids and you're a homemaker and that's it for you. Right. Right. My my mother took uh, um took verbal abuse mostly from my father that I was I was just astounded that she decided to stay through all of that and and mm-hmm. they never did divorce. But she, he after he passed on, she married a man that was so loving to her and I think she finally yeah. saw I think her regret was that she had wasted all these years letting somebody not be nice to her, you know. Right. But um, one of the fears that I have with the social media uh, thing is that um, I'm my gr- a lot of my girlfriend's children um, are thinking that they're working when they're on Facebook or on Twitter. It's become uh, – are, are they're becoming uh, – famous or something through Facebook or Twitter mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from the social media and they're not they're they're 
not going, they're not getting educated like it was driven. I mean, education was emphasized when I was growing up. Exactly. And yeah. in the 60s and late 60s, 70s, 80s, it wasn't a question. You went to college. And I think that because of the economy and social media, uh, a lot of the girls are not are, – they're, they're going backward. And they're, they're thinking, oh, I'll meet a guy and I'll get married and blah, blah, blah. And, and there's been less of a, um, an emphasis on getting an education. And I really hate seeing that. Uh, you know, I really hate seeing I it. Too. I I see it with a lot of the, the kids – that are in their uh, early twenties right now, mm-hmm. and they're th- they're thinking they're going to be famous um, because of the reality TV and and uh, you know um, yeah they make uh, it look so easy they make it look so easy and it's not real that is not right. real right and so that's uh, one thing that I'm trying to emphasize to some of the girls that I I meet is that you know you've got to get educated you've got to know you know what uh, how you're going to make it through in this world because it's not getting easier it's getting harder exactly and you fit right in with our January women's empowerment month theme because we are trying to empower women um through their mind body and spirit and what everything you've just talked about just fits right in and and we're so thankful that there are people out there like you women like you that are trying to get that message across Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. It's very important. Bo- some of the boys aren't getting educated either. They're dropping That's out. That's true. That's true. And <clears throat> so it it uh, applies to some of the boys as m- m- young men as well. Right. Yeah, well, you know, with kids, because you have to think about yourself, too, back when you were a teenager and you think, oh, you've got forever to go back to school or you have forever to do this or do that. And before you know it, you're at the point where I'm at, married with four kids and (laughs) embarking on a new career. And, And it's not, there's not just time. I mean, time goes by quicker than you think. Time goes by very, very quickly. And, um but because of because of you doing what you're doing your children get to see an example of somebody who's actually had an idea and decided to go do it and it takes work anything yeah. that you do takes work you can't sit around and talk about it or think about it you've got to actually go do it mm-hmm. and right. and so you're doing Something obviously you're doing something that you were passionate about before you started doing it. You know, you got the idea, and then you then you then you did all the things that you needed to do to learn how to do what you're doing, and then put it into action. And um, a lot of people just think, well, I think I'll you know, I think I'll write a song or think I'll be a have a band. Well, mm-hmm. you've you've got to get your butt in there and write some music and, you know, audition people and talk to people and put it together and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and then do it. And it and it's not easy. Nothing. Right. Nothing right. worth doing. You know, nothing that that uh is rewarding like that it, it comes easy. Right. And when you're thinking about doing something people out there in society that may be able to help you get into whatever it is you want to do and say it's, you know, being a singer, they're not going to know that unless you're working on it and you're doing something and you're putting something out there. They're not just going to say, oh, she had a thought, let's go help her, you know, so they definitely need to do that. They exactly. need to work on it. And Matt nothing Damon is handed talking... to us on a silver platter, so. Right. Matt Damon was talking about Ben Affleck um, on an interview that I saw recently, and and he uh, ha- was explaining that Ben was an act in had gotten into actors' jail. You know that he had done a couple of movies that went belly up; they were not successful, and uh, he had to rethink and regroup and and you know recharge and and develop his own project. So. Now he has Argo out, and he's back on top. But right, you know right. that's—I don't care who you are, and even if he has a staff 
that might help him put things together. He's got he himself has to sit down and do that work. And I don't exactly. think that people see how much work that takes and how much time it takes. Right. Yeah, they, a lot, I know a lot of people out there probably think, okay, I got an idea, let's do this, and boom, it's happening. No, this takes mm-hmm. years with a lot of things. So, And even if you choose to do something and you stumble and fall, you just get back up and you think of a new way to do it or you move on to something else. Okay. Every person doesn't have only one idea in their head. Exactly. I mean, I've... I have failed so many times, I can't even tell you. And right? I just have to step back at it and look and think, what was I thinking? You know, yeah, and, and be okay it. with it and not let mm-hmm. it destroy me, you know. Yeah. I, I, just get back up on that horse and ride, you know. You got to uh, – but I'm a doer, and I'm, I've always been pretty fearless about uh, chasing my ideas and my dreams and going for what I wanted to do and – I'm not a lazy person. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And um, some people say, how do you do all these things? I don't know. I just do it. I don't even really have a choice. I, I, I'm That's passionately so driven to do that. Because I say the same thing when people ask me, how do I do all these things? Or how does Dawn do all those things? Dawn of nine different <laughs> hats that she wears. Uh-huh. You just do them. You don't think about it. Just do That's it. Right. And before you know it, they're done. Exactly. Exactly. So... I don't know. I like the process of living, you know, in the moment, and um, and I, I've never never had a what I would consider a job, because I've always worked so hard at the things I was passionate about doing that I was able to make a, a living. Not always a great living, mm-hmm. but a, a a living, and that to me is a huge gift that you know, uh, I feel is from the universe or God, you know, I feel very, I feel very blessed that I've been able right. to follow my passion and make a living at, at doing what I love doing. Right. Yeah, not many people get to do that. And I'm proud of Dawn because Dawn has embarked on getting her master's degree and at this time in her life, and she works, <clears throat> excuse me, she works very hard at doing that. Uh, she works a full-time job. She does my show co-hosting. She has her own radio show, and wow. she has children, and she goes to school, and she gets her <laughs> homework done, and she's an A uh, student. So oh, I'm my very gosh. proud of her. Yes. Don, that's <laughs> fabulous. Go, girl. Oh. <laughs> I think it's, I'm going like to bed you. after hearing all that. Yay, well, I, I know that it's so true what you say about, you know, when you're passionate about something, you just do it. You don't think about, you know, the toll involved or the long hours or the hard work. You just do it because uh, when you love it and you love what you do, it's not work. It is part of what you love. So it it makes it, um, you know, more enjoyable than just the average person getting up and going to work every day to a job. I know. I mean, so many people say, a lot of people say, what do you do for fun? My work. Right. Um, but no, but what do you yeah. do for fun? My work. <laughs> yeah, well, and a lot of people don't get that. But when you are really doing what you love, the career or what have you, um, you know, you can honestly say when you get up to go to work, you're not going to work. You're getting up to go to your career, what you what drives you, what your passion is. And, you know, work is one thing. Work is what pays the bills. A career is what, you know, uh, pays you. It's what, you know, gives back to you what you put into it. And Exactly. Um, and so it's it's. It is a passion, and it's driven by that. And so you don't think of it as people who get up and go to work 8 to 5 every day and think, oh, it's Friday yet on Monday, you know. So Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) it's a big, big, big difference. It certainly is. Yeah, I see Dawn's attitude on Fridays when she's off of her job or work. (laughs) Yay, it's Friday. (laughs) Now I get to have fun, and she works on the shows because she loves it, you know. Right. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's so great. It's so great. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for spending time with us and learning more about you, and I'm very proud to say that I've spoken with you and and what you're doing in all aspects of your life and in helping women, and that means a lot to us. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been, I put on my Facebook, what a great way to start off the new year is to talk to you guys and be interviewed Aww. by Take Two. And, oh, thank and, you. And uh, I really want to thank you for for the interview and the time you've spent with me. And 
letting me share my life with you all. And um, I wish you a wonderful new year. 